we'll implement a PID controller on the temperature control lab. In this case, uh, this is a simple Arduino device that has a heater and a temperature sensor. And we're going to use the heater to adjust the temperature using the PID control algorithm. A little bit more information is available at this link, and I'll include this link in the video description. And uh, let me just go through a little bit more on this. We're going to, with the PID controller, we already covered the proportional, the proportional integral, and then this final one is going to be the proportional integral derivative. So we're adding this final term right here where we take the derivative of the temperature and then multiply it by our controller gain and also this tau d, the, uh, the derivative time constant. Okay, so just a little bit more information on this. Again, we cannot use the continuous form of the integral, so we do a discrete form. Instead, there are other forms of this PID equation, such as the velocity form, uh, but we're just going to stick with the simple uh, standard one. And then also approximate our uh, derivative term. Because we don't have an instantaneous derivative, we'll do a finite difference approximation. In reality, this doesn't work that well, because if you're coming up on the temperature locally, the derivative is going to be changing a lot. So we typically want to implement filters or other things. Um, but we'll just do that, uh, we'll just implement this one for now, just knowing that uh, there are some problems with the derivative term, especially ha if you have noise or random fluctuations in your measurements. Okay, so there's uh, different filter forms. Uh, let me just go down through. Uh, we also have, for this one, we have just a PID function that you can use. and this helps you reuse code so you don't have to uh, program the PID controller each time. There are also other packages in Python like uh, simple uh, PID that you can pip install and use that one. It's kind of like this function. It just makes a, a function available to you so that you can um, reuse code instead of programming it uh, each time yourself. But in here, we have the proportional, integral, and derivative terms. And then our output is just the addition of those together. And then we implement anti-reset windup as well, so that if we're outside of the output low or output high limit, it doesn't uh, continue to increment the integral term. All right, and then we are also going to implement aggressive IMC tuning. For this, and here are the tuning correlations right here. So I'm going to leave this open off to the side just as we uh, implement this so that we can see the tuning correlations. And let's go ahead and bring this over and get our starting code. So if we come down here, here is the uh, starting PID control script. And you'll see the code with just areas to fill in with this PID function. And so I'm going to select this get code in the bottom right and then copy this. And then let's go into here and OK, just start from scratch again on, in terms of implementing the controller. So let's implement our PID tuning values uh, You know from the uh, earlier sections on modeling, we had a gain of about 0.9, a tau i of about 175 uh, seconds. Let me save this as a Python file. I'll call this PID control.py. Okay, that's nicer with the syntax highlighting. And then uh, we had theta p, which is our, oh, I need to be, this is a tau p and theta p, and that's about 15 seconds. OK, so there's our, um, there's our approximate first order plus dead time model. And then we have some tuning correlations here. We're going to start just with the aggressive tuning. So we want to have a tau c uh, value in here as well. Uh, tau uh, c is going to be equal to the max of 0 0.1 times tau p. And then also 0 0.8 times uh, 
theta p. So it's going to take the maximum of those. Um, so uh, it looks like the 0.1 times tau p is going to be about 17.5 versus the 0.8 times theta p. Uh, it looks like it's going to be about 11. So it'll be a uh, tau c will be about uh, will be 17.5. All right, let's go on to uh, the next one, this is our KC value. And so we're going to have 1 divided by KP. All right. And then multiplied by tau P plus 0 0.5 times theta P. And then we'll divide by tau C, which is our 17.5, plus 0 0.5 times theta P. All right, there's our KC value. That's our controller gain. And this is for IMC aggressive tuning. Let's go over to the uh, tau I as well. Okay, this one is tau P plus 0 0.5 times uh, theta P. All right, and then our tau D. Okay, and that's going to be tau p times theta p divided by 2 times uh, tau p plus theta p. Okay, so here are the correlations. If we just print, uh, let me just do kc. All right, here's our kc value. And then we'll also print um, tau i just be able to inspect them after it runs just to make sure we're not getting something that's uh, completely unrealistic uh, if we made some error uh, in the math all right so there we go there's our KC tau I and tau D <clears throat> okay so we have our tuning constants now let's go ahead and implement our PID controller we have some inputs here so I'm just going to copy this one because we want to call it um, down below. And so let's just have, uh, okay, we have this is going to be equal to, um, and it's going to return a few things. So I need to return, uh, here it is, here's what we're returning, OP and then the P, I, and D terms. All right, so let's just return the P, I, and D. All right, so let's see. We need to uh, do one thing here, which is define our integral error. That's going to be 0. And then when it returns, we need that to be the integral error as well. It's going to increment it, potentially. If there's a wind-up, then it won't increment it. Uh, but we're going to have integral error as one of our inputs. And then it's also going to return here. All right, the next thing that we need to do is put in our set point. All right, there's our set point. And again, we're just going from 23 to 60 degrees. Now we need our PV value. That's going to be our T1 or uh, T1i. And then we need the last PV value as well because we're going to be doing a finite difference on the derivative but if you do that the very first cycle it's going to have an error so what we need to do here is just say um, max 0 comma i minus 1 so the very first time it's not going to have a derivative action but then after that it will all right our dt term is going to be one second and i think we have everything ready now for the pid controller if we wanted to quantify the performance, like through an integral absolute error, we could start that here and then uh, increment it. Integral absolute error plus equals. And then we'll do NP absolute value. And just take the difference between our set point and our PV value. OK, so the, here is our PID controller. We just use this function. Uh, we have the set point, the measured value, the prior measured value, the integral error, and then our sampling time. And then that's implemented up here. 
in the uh, PID function. Okay, you can see it uh, right here with a little bit of a description of the inputs and the outputs. All right, I think that's it. Uh, let's go ahead and run this and then uh, see how well it does in terms of uh, meeting the uh, set point. All right, and here it is. I'll go ahead and open it with IDLE, but you could do this in Jupyter Notebook or any other uh, Python environment. Let's see if we had any errors here. We see, um, you know, the KC, Tau I, and Tau D. And those look reasonable. Um, you know, 8 for the gain, 182.5 for the Tau I, and then 7 uh, for the derivative. And you can see here that um, you know, when we had the set point change, we went to 100% heater. Uh, before it was, uh, you know, there's some derivative action. It looks like a little bit of noise here. We may need to do a derivative filter. It's going to be opening, uh, sorry, turning on and turning off that um, heater a little bit extra if we have any measurement noise because of the derivative action. I'll go ahead and pause it now and then um, we'll come back and just take a look at the results. Uh, but while this is going, I'll also let me just give a quick overview of where we're going with this. Uh, see the big picture of um, these assignments. All right, and if you just come to schedule on the course, you can see the overview. All right, of the uh, of the course, and in particular, it's this right-hand column right here. Um, where we do the TC lab activities and we started off with modeling exercises and then this is the controller development uh, we prior previously did the process and block diagram or the controller design the P only control uh, we had PI control and then uh, this one is PID control and then subsequent ones um, are going to be the tuning the PI control tuning and the PID control tuning and then we'll add a feed forward to that as well. Uh, we'll be taking a look at the actuators and the sensors. And that will be the end of that uh, block after we did the uh, modeling uh, previously. Okay, I'll pause it and then we'll um, pick it back up again once it's done and take a look at the results. All right, the uh, controller's continuing to go here. We can see the heater values. They're fluctuating a little bit by uh, you know, sometimes three to four, sometimes even more, depending on the measurement of the temperature. But you can see we're getting very close to the temperature set point, 59.57. It's helped to regulate it to that set point. And then once this is done, a, a plot is going to appear. And it'll show us the performance on how we're doing with this uh, PID controller. Okay, so just finished. This is IMC with aggressive tuning. And you can see, uh, you know, this went to saturation here. It uh, saturated the heater controller output. You see it went to a 100% during this initial rise period. And then it went down. Um, but you can see the derivative action here, how it's trying to estimate the derivative, but just locally with that finite difference approximation, it creates some additional movement on the manipulated variable that may be undesirable for some applications, especially like valves, where opening and shutting the valve frequently is going to cause additional wear on the valve. But uh, for this heater, it isn't that much of a problem just turning on and off the transistor heater. But you can see the, um, the rise to the, the set point. Now you can see maybe we'd want a little bit more integral action, reduce the time constant, the integral time constant uh, to get there just a little bit faster but you can see it does a fairly good job of making it to the set point and controlling uh, to 60 degrees and the next um, the next exercises we're going to be taking a PI and a PID controller and working on the tuning so these tuning rules are the initial suggestion and then you can uh, further adjust the parameters to come up with a more aggressive or less aggressive controller.